Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video, and today we're going to be doing a review of the Runcam Micro Swift 2. You can just get a quick look at all the specs on the side here. We got 5 to 36 volts, NTSC, IR block lens, and 2.1 millimeter there. And now this is pretty much the same thing as the original Micro Swift, except now this has a voltage OSD and presets built into it. So in the box, just a nice little box with some foam in it. You get the camera, obviously. Um, you get a little bag here with the camera cables. You get a few little screws in there, as well as you do get a nice little aluminum bracket. So now they do give you a little bit for mounting options, which is really nice. And they also do now include the OSD cable with the micro. So that's nice because with the version 1 micro, they didn't give you the OSD cable. And if it's your first camera, you wouldn't be able to change any of the settings. And Runcam also now offers this little 25 milliwatt VTX backpack for the micro here. You can see it would just use a little spacer and then it would just screw right on to the back here. The holes line up and then you that'd be your whole FPV setup. Got a little, little linear whip on here. You could put this on a little ultralight plane, three inch quad, something, I don't know, but that's really neat. But the VTX obviously does not come included. So this review is going to be pretty short and simple because it's pretty much the exact same camera as the first version micro. You know, same lens and everything. It just now has the OSD capabilities with the voltage sensing. If you look on the back here, we have our 5 to 36 volts, our ground video, and then you have the VBAT ground and OSD. And I think if you just hook up the main power on the far left here, the 5 to 36 volts to VBAT, it will still read, but I like to power that off of 5 volts from the Unify just to give it more regulated so I don't accidentally burn my camera, just in case, and then I run the VBAT wire um, to the battery pads to get the voltage OSD. And now this also does have some presets. They have the light tracks, a couple other different settings similar to what the Foxier Micro tried to achieve. It had a couple of different presets. However, the presets on here were pretty bad. Actually, they were like all green and not good at all. So hopefully the preset settings that they have on here will be better. So let's get this put into a quad. All right, so I got the Micro Swift 2 installed on my Mode 2 Ghost here. So let me just real quick run over the components of this frame for the testing for the flight footage that I'll show you. So we just have, obviously the Mode 2 Ghost is the frame here. And then we have the Brother Hobby R3 2207 2550KV motors, Gemfan 5152 whiskey props, obviously the Swift Micro 2, Speedix IS 30 amp 4 in 1 ESC, Hyperlight F4 flight controller, TBS Unify HV race, running 200 milliwatts, and an Emacs Pagoda. Left hand circle to your polarize, and I will be using a clear view to receive the video. So as for the camera install, it was super simple. This frame is meant for micro cameras, just, you know, in many similar, very similar designs out there. You just sort of screw it in, and it slides onto the standoffs. Obviously, there's different variations of this, but mounting the micro cameras is really easy to the standoffs with some sort of 3D printed adapter like this. And as for the camera, it fits perfectly in there, and here's the little OSD cable just sticking out. I just sort of just poke it in there. I don't have issues with it coming out, but if you do, you could just, you know, tape it in or cut it off if you don't wish to use it, but I do find it helpful. And then I just wired it up simply using 5 volts from the Unify and then the VBAT wire to my main battery lead so I get the voltage readout. And then for the battery, I'll just be using a Tattoo R-Line 1550 milliamp hour 95C. So let's go get some flight footage. All right, so here we have me just setting up the camera. You press and hold the up button to get into this menu and you just set it up here. I'm just putting in the pilot name as I want it. And you can also, you can see for the alarm, you set your battery voltage when it starts to flash red. I chose 14 volts here. And then I go down and turn the uh, system off to get rid of run cam and put my name at the bottom. So here we go, and this is 100% stock settings and raw footage. I haven't adjusted the saturation of brightness at all. However, remember that I am running a clear view, so it does add a little bit of saturation on its own, but this is pretty much what it looks like through the camera. You can see everything's looking pretty decent. It's a very overcast, cloudy day, so the camera's having a little bit of trouble, but it's handling it pretty well, and it looks decent on the stock settings right here. Just flying around, plenty flyable for sure. And just looking up and down, seeing how it adjusts the light. 
not as quick as I'd like it to be, but you know, it definitely adjusts well and doesn't blow out either the sky or the ground when you're looking at one or the other. I'm just going back behind the trees just to see how it does the shadows. Again, it's decent on stock settings, not the greatest, but certainly flyable. Since it is a cloudy day, might as well try out the presets. So here I go through the presets. You can see there's twilight, then we have personal, which is your user settings, then you have light tracks, then outdoor and indoor, and then cloudy. So since it is cloudy, let's see what the cloudy preset looks like. So right off the bat, hopefully you can see a, everything's a lot brighter and the saturation is greater. And honestly, I think it does a really nice job. It's a lot easier to see more detail in the dark places than it was before, so definitely I would try these presets out, as the cloudy one certainly does work well enough for here. Hopefully you can tell it's just a lot easier to see things in general. colors and detail overall are very nice and sharp and saturated so it really actually looks pretty nice and the cloudy preset is definitely I think better than the one on the Foxier Micro because when I use that one it just it, it left a weird green tint um, on the, the preset settings for those so I'm not sure why so I just leave those on stock settings but looks like the preset modes for the run cam work well and hopefully you can see the battery voltage when it turns red it goes below the 14 volts right there. Alright, so let me just finish up my thoughts on this little Runcam Micro Swift 2. I definitely am a big fan of it. I never um, specifically weighed it in this video, but it's it's the exact same weight as the first one, which is, I have the V1, which is I think like 5.6 grams or something like that. So it's it's really a big difference over some full-size cameras. Here's some two other Runcams. These weigh, you know, 19, 15 grams, so you're saving like at least 10 grams of weight and it may not seem like a big deal but 10 grams and something just the, like the camera that's easy weight to save so I don't see any reason of not doing it and for me the picture quality is absolutely perfect I don't see any difference between the full size the full size might have a little bit better light handling it seems like these guys the micro cameras get a little bit more washed out sometimes probably because the image sensor is just a little bit smaller because it's shrunken down but in terms of that, and especially since I mostly race, I think it's not a big deal at all, and it's definitely micro cameras are my go-to. In terms of the version 2 Swift versus the version 1, I would definitely get the version 2. It gives you those presets as well as the voltage OSD. That's the most important um, feature of the 2 versus the 1 for me. It's just nice to see that at the bottom of the screen. I don't need any other OSD stuff like current, especially for racing. I'm not going to see it anyways. Um, the little warning that was on there when it flashes red when your battery gets too low that you can set up that's actually that's that's kind of cool but i found that you know it, your battery sags um it just goes down and sags so it's going to be flashing red and then going back to white a lot so it's not that useful but it definitely is something nice to have and if you're going if you're doing easier flying it'll help point it out to you when your battery gets lower so now in terms of the micro swift 2 compared to the fox ear micro um, there's really, for me, there's not much difference at all. They're pretty much the same exact weight, same exact size, same exact everything. Um, the lenses obviously do look quite different, but when flying them, I don't notice any difference at all, really. Um, one might argue that this has a different field of view or type of field of view than this one, but for me, they're pretty much the same. So, recommending one versus the other, I'm really hesitant to because they perform the exact same for me. So, I just say whichever one you can get a better deal on or is in stock for you or is the easiest to get, I would go with. Because I think I think the uh, Foxier is just a tiny bit cheaper, but really, it's only a few bucks, if that. So, yeah, overall, it's just a really nice camera. And micro cameras definitely are the future of FPV. And Runcam does have a pretty cool little nano camera coming soon that's even smaller than this. So stay tuned for that if I do get one. There will be a link down below if you're interested in this camera. Please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.